Hi everybody, Helena here. Kelly here. We are Speaker Insight, where we help speakers, authors and coaches to build a business on your terms. And it's just the two of us today, no interviews. I know. Uh, but with a subject that we know is close to the heart of many, many of you. So whilst most of you are arriving, because I think we actually went live a teeny bit early. One minute early today. Oh, my word. <laughs> so we are just going to welcome you in. Same blanket hellos to those of you who are appearing. Julie, like, nice to see you. Um, and we're going to obviously talk about the buzz in our business. So for those of you who don't know the buzz in your business, uh, we would love to hear what yours is. So please, please, please put the buzz in your business in uh, the stuff that's intriguing, interesting, exciting, stuff that you've got coming up, things that you are actually proud of that you just completed. What are you talking about that gets people interested? And Kelly will kind of no doubt um, tell me what some of those things are. So before that happens, our buzz in the business is um, most of you probably join us inside the Connection Hub, and I'm sure Kelly will uh, put, put a link, link in. There we go. Um, most of you join us inside the Connection Hub may even be watching us from there, but we always go live on our Speaker Insight page, and we had a little milestone, we didn't did. we? So we've just hit a thousand likes on our page, and that's kind of without us pretty much trying. You know, we, <laughs> we, 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 that just happens as a byproduct, because what we really love is the conversations that speakers, authors, and coaches have with each other and also with the people who supply them, the people who support them, the people who provide the resources for them so they can grow those speaker, author, coach businesses. And that all happens inside the Connection Hub. So if you're not a member, please come and join us in there. Um, and if you haven't, if you are a member of the Connection Hub and you haven't liked the Speaker Insight page, come and like the page because, <laughs> because we're now quite excited about the fact that we've got a thousand likes on that page. But we're also going to be doing a bit of a, a marketing plan for our page. Which is um, exciting. Which includes a blog, it includes podcasts. It includes all sorts on. of things. So, so there will be more value coming up on the page as we actually go as well. Um, other buzz in our business, I took some time off for the bank holiday. Did you guys? Um, no. Kelly didn't. <laughs> I, I was really geeky and just worked all my way through my to-do list. <laughs> and I now feel like I'm in catch-up mode. So, so you know, holidays and all of that good stuff. Having said that, though, uh, I suspect that a long blog is coming up or possibly a Facebook Live on how puzzles are like running a business. Uh, more on that later. Daisy's watching from Germany. Her Ooh. buzz is just almost all of her tickets for her walking wardrobe is sold. Oh, it's just gone off my thing. But I think that Congratulations. Was That's really good going. I love that. That. Speaking of sold out, we are running a Connect and Create Day tomorrow, tomorrow. so uh, that is quite exciting. So we'll see several of you there, I'm sure, tomorrow. Um, and that was sold out quite early, so remember, was. if you want to come to our next one, which I can't remember the date July for, the 17th. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> then make sure you Details. get it in your diary. They do sell out Details. way before. Details, schmeetails. <laughs> Tech details all right, it's all, all right. good no it's all good um so kelly you did something last week as well god did i what did yeah I do? You, were, you were speaking <laughs> at gary's mastermind yeah, so, so i had a lovely day up north yeah. um uh, gary's one of my clients so i had a day with them but then i spoke at his food for thought event in the evening uh, which Sounds is really fun. nice networking masterminding um and actually one of our, our members julia was surprisingly there she wasn't meant to be there but she took someone's place and was like you're here that's you're like wow so so you know sort of the thing is we love seeing you wherever you are and that's really rather good um the other thing that's quite exciting we've got our speaker insight retreat coming up it's only for eight people it's coming up in at the end of june and so we've of course been as we would be planning for that in that way and uh, we've added some really really juicy content to the retreat. So we can't wait to actually run that. Links in the comments. It's good. Uh, I think we've only got four spaces left out of the eight. So, you know, so, yeah. sort of like, so really you get two uh, and seven other people in the room and that's basically it. So it's uh, a I'm real jealous. deep dive. Nicole's watching from Crete, writing her latest book on the beach. Damn, girl, wow, that's I'm good. <laughs> that's good, don't worry, honey. We're going to Morocco, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, we're Steph's going... got the flu. She took time off because she's got the flu. Wish oh, you sweetheart. Well, <laughs> well we, we will distract you for the next 30 minutes or so <laughs> with some pricing. <laughs> we'll, we we'll, try. we'll try, we'll try. We, we, we have this ambition that actually says 30 minutes or so, and that's kind of how it is. speaking at the Grand Designs live on Thursday, so nice. she's prepping her talks. Nice. And she started to whip out a bathroom this morning. 
<laughs> Those are two very opposite things, but I suppose one makes you helps you think about the other. I don't know. Do you use it as a meditation or a preparation in some way? I don't know. Uh, it's good. So for those of you, I've probably burbled for long enough. We've got 12 of you here at the moment, so that's good. Uh, I am going to say this. Most of you probably are doing this on the uh, replay, so do a hashtag replay because we really like to actually see that. Um, and we can ask you a que answer your questions to anything, whether this was live or not. So please, please, please just do us. just tag us um, and we will answer. Oh, so, one more. Amy on is she's watching from across the pond, as, as always. Hi, Amy. Her second online course is fully underway this week and is going very well. Look at you go. You are just uh, flying. Yeah, flying. Flying is the way. So. Let's get into some content, otherwise we will yeah. be here for a, for a long time. Like, just having a catch up with we're, everyone. We're, we're, we're just turning into Ant and Deck or something like that. Yeah, let's so, not do that. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. We've got that money. <laughs> it's a good point, well made. Like, let's definitely get into the teach because we're not that funny. So, pricing is definitely not a cookie cutter approach in our world. Like, we get asked the question over and over and over again, you know, what should I do with my pricing? And it's like, there is no one size fits all. I promise you, if there was, we would make it easy for you, but there really isn't. What we have done is pull together some, some perspectives, some inner and outer perspectives, some things for you to think about that will allow you to at least consider how your pricing currently is, what you might want to do with it, which is really um, uh, the, the best that we can do for you. So whether it's for a keynote, whether it's for a coaching session, whether it's your book, the pricing of, all of us have at some point struggled with how do I price this thing? Yeah. And the Carl says pricing stumps her every time. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, you are not alone. So, so this, I think it will be a much watched kind of thing. In fact, I think there's about 18 of yeah, you watching at the moment. I'm like, up, oh, how exciting. <laughs> So, uh, so, so let me start with a little bit of context. So Kelly, as you know, manages Stellar Speakers and, uh, you know, some of those keynotes can be 500 to 25K a keynote. So, so you know, that's, that's prices range. in the eye of the beholder and there is a massive range of it. John DiMartini, who is a real hero of both of ours, um, you know, he, I remember him, I remember sitting in the audience and him saying, I bought yeah, the, the Book of gig. Wealth, were you? Yeah, oh, no, 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 oh. I was on the, I was on the seven days of Demartini, oh, kill okay. me type amazing, like feed me information and just absorb it all kind of thing. At 100 but, miles an hour. Yeah, at 100, <laughs> truly, truly. My bottom got rather sore from the sitting because he forgot that you have human needs. Like it's, anyway, <laughs> enough. man after my own heart. I know, right? I mean, truly, I just went into the zone of, I am absorbing. Anyway, so one of the things that I really heard was that he spent hundreds of thousands of pounds on the Book of Wealth, the original Book of Wealth by Hubert Howe Bancroft. Yeah. Because about that was, big, yeah, it, it's mahoosive. Like it's, it. It, think, think Encyclopedia Britannica and you're somewhere in the, in the region of it because he wanted to understand everything there was about wealth. But his concept of it's worth it was exactly that. It's worth it, hundreds of thousands of pounds for these books, which are going to create even more wealth in the world for me and the people that I teach. It's worth it. So price is in the eye of the beholder. Price is in the, heart, in the eye of, uh, or value. the perspective, the value is in the perspective of the people who are actually paying for it. So sometimes we get mixed up with, well, what should I charge for it? Rather than thinking about what will they pay for it. Yeah. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, it really is that whole question of, please don't be asking, what should I be charging for my service? Kelly's gonna give you a different question uh, in, a, in a second. One of the things that we do inside of our membership, um, Changemaker Central, is we, we, we teach people consistently having a product range and a clear user journey is the thing that allows you to actually help you price things accordingly because it makes it make sense for your prospect or your clients to, to really understand where they are in the journey, why they might need what you are actually kind of serving them with and why that's of value to them. Yeah. So it's an educational process that makes sense. And that bit of that makes sense is the really key thing. Because a lot of people just go, I'm going to create a product because I want to create a product and I'm just going to plonk it in here. But it doesn't make sense in terms of who you are and how you're showing up. So it 
what we want to create for you or help you create when you're thinking about your pricing is is how do you best price your one-to-one -one services your you know the the results that you can create for people can be packaged up in many different different ways whether it's one-to-one -one, whether it's a group program whether it's in a book whether it's in a a, a course an online membership all of those things have their place and there is a best price for each of those but all of your knowledge can be packaged up differently. So that's where the confusion starts to come, isn't it? Come in, well, right? I think it's a one size fits all, and it, that's why they think it's a cookie yeah. cutter approach. And so many, so many places, and, and I am gonna be a little bit disparaging here, um, it really isn't cookie cutter, but a lot of people present it like it is. You must have a funnel and you must funnel people in and it must be this shape or that shape or an ice cream or a and this. And then we'll discount it, 2,000 pounds. Exactly, and it's like, well, that's confusing. So we wanna help you not be confusing, but also understand how your worth and value is perceived by others. Which so, is the perfect introduction, thank you very much. You're welcome. And as Beth's saying, what's the, she wants to know what the new question is. So it's not revolutionary, mm -hmm. Beth, but don't be asking, what should I price my products? Yeah. Ask yourself instead, what is your product worth, yes. okay, or your service worth? That's where you go, because we are all unique, as Helena said, we've all got the different experiences, credentials, qualifications, a uh, range of products, mm. to then determine actually what's that worth. So when you're thinking about any of your purchases, not just in business, but in life, mm. you get drawn to a product because of the emotion. Agreed. Right, and that's why we help you really understand your avatar and the language and the pain points that they're in because then their, their radar comes up as soon as they hear something that is an emotional connection to where they are, whether it's in the pain or whether it's the aspiration. Yeah. So people then will start looking and reading and looking into your product when you've got their attention emotionally. Mm. However, people buy on logic, yeah. right? And we do see this when you've got seminars where people are rushing to the back of the room and they're actually buying on emotion well, there. They, yeah, they, they buy on emotion, but they justify with logic. And logic kicks in about three seconds later, right? And also when they go home to their partner. That's right. And that's when at the back of the room sales events, you get a lot of refunds because people then have time. They go home at the weekend and they reflect on it. They speak to their partner and they go, yeah, actually, maybe maybe this doesn't make sense. Maybe we can't afford this right at the moment, so yeah. therefore you get the refunds. Yeah. So in order to um, reduce the amount of re refunds and returns you get, yeah. definitely get their attention on the emotion. Mm. But this is how you actually will understand for yourself what you're worth, is by saying, yeah. what are the results, tangible results, that this product or service that you're wanting to price is going to give somebody. Now, some of you are going to be going, oh, but I coach people and it's all about the inner stuff. We're coming to that. that. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just nipping it in the bud because there'll be some people in there going, I'm oh, here they go tangible. again. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the ones where you have got something which is a monetary or a tangible number associated with your products. Yeah. Say, for example, um, you're a sales coach and you're, you can basically increase, you, you look at your results, which is why we tell you to track and measure everything. Please. But on average, you might say that you work with an organization and their sales will go up 20%, let's say, mm -hmm. when you've done a three month coaching package with them or they've done something with them. Okay. And say, if you say your average client, it has a million pound turnover, then you can actually charge that coaching at 20K. Yeah. Because that's the perceived worth. You can say, your sales are gonna go up 20%, this is what you're currently selling at, so therefore you're gonna make 20 grand, yeah. and that's not just paying my cost, that's ongoing, and it's gonna, probably gonna increase even more. And, and I'm just gonna pull Josepha's uh, question in here, which is, well, what about if it's a product that you haven't yet got the results for, you can still do some estimation, some guesstimation on the back of, you know, what have you proved and done before? And I know that you specifically have got stats from that type of thing, but you can actually look at what is an organization or a business or an individual currently doing and what is likely to happen at 20% more, 30% more, 40% more. And you can begin to actually outline what they might like. So don't let the fact that it's a new product kind of, pull you back from yep. charging what it's worth. And like we always say, and we've done it in one of our Facebook lives about how to test what your clients want, 
beta test your stuff. Completely. Get some clients to go through, get those results so that you can actually use it in your real launch yeah. and you can then work out whether that price was yeah. the right price for you. Even having a conversation, even going and approaching some of the previous clients that you have and saying, this is the product I'm about to launch because this is the feedback that I've been getting that might be needed. Can I talk this through with you and just actually see what might be possible for you? That will begin to give you some tangible stuff. So for those of you that Helena was addressing earlier about, oh, okay, I don't have a tangible result. Yeah. My, my product or service probably gives the person more of an emotional result than a tangible result. I live in this camp. Yeah. So, so a lot of you, so say for example, there might be a speaker trainer on there that helps the speakers um, become more confident in their delivery and more, more, or more honed in their delivery. Yeah. So let's say for example, you uh, help them become more confident what I need you to then think of is, yeah, that's not something I can measure or put a, a number on, mm. but then you can go, so what happens when they're more confident? Well, they basically then feel that they can charge more, they feel that they can approach bigger organizations or bigger stages because they've got more confidence in what they do. So actually the confidence might help them help them increase their prices by 10%. I have, I, and I have actually got it, okay, go, go for so, it. So if say for example, they were charging 5K, which is sort of an average for a keynoter, then mm. if they're charging the putting their prices up by 10%, then you can say that speaker training session was worth 500 pounds in direct proportion, even though you might be thinking you just gave them the confidence, what did they do with the confidence that yeah. then could be potentially changed into a tangible monetary result? Yeah, so, so, uh, so Dion, have fun at work uh, and <laughs> catch up later. And uh, I don't know what the last one is. On okay. what you're gonna say? So, so what I was gonna say was, so sometimes what I need to actually do with people is to say, okay, so you haven't actually been showing up in the environment that you would like to be showing up for, you know, in the way that you would like to be for the last three, four months. Three or four months of the average number of clients that you would like mm. to be attracting equals this much money. So would you like to lose that much money over the next little while or should we do something about building up your confidence so that you show yeah. up so that you can actually gain that that return back? So so please, 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 like, you know, I will challenge any one of you who that does something soft skills based to actually monetize it or, or put a figure on it so that you can actually establish the ROI, the return on investment that somebody might make. So Nicole's asking here, what about finishing their book? She can show them no. how Great. and even coach them for the momentum, but I can't make them right. So the, the, mm. the pricing and the so what for you, Nicole, yeah. is yes, we know so many people want to write a book and they've probably started it and got bits of them. Lots of people don't finish it. But the book itself isn't actually something that's tangible, right? Well, it mm -hmm. is a tangible result, but it's not something you're going to get measured on. I would be trying to measure it to, if you had a book, what would that allow you to do? Mm -hmm. So what doors does books do, do book open? Yeah. So, so how is that going to increase the amount of clients you're going to be able to do from lead generation? Mm -hmm. As a speaker agent, if you've got a best-selling book, your keynote fee goes up. So again, if, yeah. are they speakers? So will it be able to improve their, their fee of what they're charging? Yeah. So think about the so what yeah. of finishing that book. What is that going to do for them? What's the How consequence? And, and I mean consequence in a positive and a negative kind of way. So for some people, they're a way motivated and some people are towards motivated. So some people will be really excited about the prospect of when I finish my book, all of this will be possible. For some people, it'll be a, actually, if I don't finish my book, then I won't get X, Y, and Z. So sometimes it's about presenting both of those pictures as well that allows them just to actually kind of go get the G up and go, oh yes, here it is. Yeah. It may even be something as simple as, you have me for three months and I will commit to you for three months, but in three months time, I have somebody new to actually do this with. Would you like the support that I can offer you in that period of time? And again, I know that sounds a little bit harsh, but sometimes when people are avoiding or procrastinating about something, the hand-holding is you mm -hmm. ensuring that they actually do it. Partly why we pay a coach is because we want to lag behind and the co we're paying the coach. Think about a personal trainer. We pay a personal trainer to do that last little kind of like, 
you can do two more. And you go, okay, good, I can. <laughs> it's that, right? So sometimes we need to step into that. And hi, France, Lise, nice to see you. So Julie's saying here, I stumble on pricing, mm. especially on the services when they're predominantly to the consumer and the consumer thinks that they can do it for themselves due to the TV shows, magazines, and free stuff online. I know that you yeah. do interior design. Interior design. So my challenge to you, Julie, is that it's your avatar. Yeah. So you're then attracting avatars that want to do it themselves, whether from the cost point of view or whether that they really like that. Yeah. I would say shift your avatar. Mm. Your avatar is people like me who have no creative understanding. They like it. They look in the ideal um, She's gonna be magazine. This book. I know. <laughs> and I go, oh, I want my home to look like that. Yeah. But I don't want to do it, design it, do any crafty stuff, yeah. go and buy things. I want something to do. So shift your avatar is yeah. what I'm saying. It's really simple. And, and, and did you hear the message in there? So it literally is a... Do you want your home to look like this, but you don't know how to do it? Let me do it. Yeah. Like it literally is like think, put yourself, sometimes we overthink things and actually sometimes it's quite simple. Yeah. Okay. So we've got the whole <laughs> thing here about price around results, whether that's tangible results or whether it's an emotional result, think of the, what do they do with the emotion that you've actually helped them, the yes. confidence building, what, what do they have? as a tangible result from that mm -hmm. and also think um about this is the last bit is actually about doing a SWOT analysis it is important for you to do strengths weaknesses opposition opportunities and threats yeah. and looking at who else is in your industry yeah. because this really helps you understand your positioning mm -hmm. if you're looking out there and going because okay, so the average uh let's say chiropractor yeah. or whatever for france leaves out there right yeah. so it's like looking at what do they do? Yeah. Well, actually, I've got this and I can help with back pain, but I also really understand how that works with child childbirth yeah. and pregnancy, and that's my USP. And so because I've got this added specialism, yeah. I can actually charge more because I'm more niche and I'm more specialised. Mm -hmm. So when you look at what other people are doing, you, I would do a stock check. What am I doing that they're doing? Yeah. So we're equal. Yeah. What am I doing that they're not doing? Yes. So then I can go, that's why I can charge a little bit more because yeah. I've got this more the extra service this more experience this or qualification etc and it's a great opportunity for you to go god they're doing that and i'm not doing it and that's not saying that you should do everything no nope. but if there's something there which you're interested in you can deliver then up your game yeah right so that at least then you can see where you're sitting in the marketplace yeah um so Nicole's just saying that's yeah. helpful. Great. So so I would just they're, they're the first things to get you started, changing your mindset about the pricing. It's actually being results orientated and looking to see where you fit in your organization, yeah. in your industry, so that you can actually see the tangible when people are making this logical decision, yeah. I'm gonna invest this time because it's that's not right. just about price. No. I'm gonna invest this time in your product and service yeah. and this this monetary investment what's the ROI from me? Yeah, and that's what, what am I actually, decision. yeah. And, and at the end of the day, we are all problem solvers. That is basically what we are. So our pricing helps to solve a problem because our product or service that is priced well is the thing that moves them past the problem that they currently have. So here are some things, I'm gonna throw a whole bunch of things at you. So this is definitely a pen out job if you haven't already. I'm gonna throw a whole bunch of things around you know, actually, what is your worth? Knowing what your worth is, because we intrinsically, as I say, if you can manage to get to the point where you can actually separate out your pricing and come at it from a what they would pay for it, they being your avatar. So the first thing here is know your avatar. As always. <laughs> she managed to squeeze it in there beforehand. I thought I'd actually get in there first with this one, but of course, that's how it is. But know your avatar, because you need to know and understand what their perceived need and what their problems are so that you know what it costs them to have that problem. Because if you know what it costs them to have that problem, then you can price accordingly for solving that problem. It's like the return on investment, but it's a different, it's a slightly different perspective on it. So they're likely not to even see a price if they see that you have a solution to the problem that they didn't even realize was there. So back to Julie and- <laughs> Hello, I'm right Her, her house is already beautiful, so <laughs> well, probably- I've still got but, the second floor to do actually oh, you see you just did it there you just did it like i was trying to get you out of it then but anyway so but, but you get that that's exactly what i'm talking about if you know your avatar really well you can speak in problem not price 
And if you're speaking in problems and solutions, their perspective is, oh, thank goodness, there's somebody that can help me with that, mm -hmm. rather than a, oh, let me kind of match up the different prices and just go on the lowest price. So you don't want to be in that scenario. So that's one thing, knowing your avatar inside and out and knowing the perspective that they actually have, their perceived need. The second thing that actually helps you weirdly increase your prices or charge what you're worth is building relationships. The more they know you, the easier it is for them to just buy you without even asking what the price is. Nine times out of 10, that's what happens with me now. It's just like, I'm ready for you now. It's like, you know, where are you at? Okay, good. So this is about getting them to trust you and getting them to understand you and how you can be a solution to that problem, yeah. which really helps. The, the, <laughs> the next one, and I've said this a thousand times, borrowed credibility. Mm -hmm. Like price your product on the back of your own credibility, on the borrowed credibility of the, on the positioning that you're actually doing. So if you have worked with some really big names, don't hide that. No. If you're allowed to share those big names because you are actually positioning yourself. So part of the positioning is, you know, your qualifications, your experience, your expertise, the people that you've worked with. But on the flip side, it's also the, the, what have you actually created? The case studies, the, the results, the, the, results the, proof. the proof that you've actually done and the value. And this is the key. So sometimes uh, in our how to get testimonials video, you know, we talked a lot about how you actually help others demonstrate the value that you give. So part of this is about ensuring that you're asking the right questions so that that value is received and understood and go, they go, oh, so if she did that for that person, then she might be able to do it for this person. So. So far, know your avatar, build your relationships, understand your and use your credibility really well. The other thing that you'll see, and this isn't a run to the back of the room scenario, this is more around exclusivity. So using exclusivity, using your, your time is precious. As a speaker, author or a coach, you need to decide how you're spending your valuable input. And exclusivity can actually be the thing. They, if they want access to you, they may well need to pray, pay more because you only have a few spaces or you actually choose that the, the experience that you want to give. So at our retreat, yeah. we only do eight people because we know that we basically tear everybody, all of those eight peoples, we tear their businesses apart and we, and we put them all back one together. One. Exactly. Yeah. And so in order to do that, if we had 16 people in the room, we would not create the same results. So on the back of that, there's an exclusivity factor that allows you to price accordingly. So again, your time, your energy are precious. For some of you who are introverts, you may well never want to work in large groups of people. You may want to do the one-to-one -one work, or it might be the opposite for you in some way. So know how you operate in order to charge as well. So just because they want it doesn't mean you have to give it. Mm. And just because they want it doesn't mean you can't charge then what you would like to receive for it. So you might choose that actually you could do the one-to-one, -one, but then you need a week off. Okay, so charge accordingly and somebody somewhere will pay for it. We Especially if you've a, got your avatar right. We, we were having a conversation in, in our uh, membership group um, about the fact that somebody delivers some work and it really drains her. Yes. So she actually feels like completely dead and she often gets sick. So the advice was, I said, don't not give everything you can, mm. but increase your prices so that you can take those next few days completely off That's to recuperate. It. So therefore, it had, the price has to work for you yep. as well as your avatar. Yeah, completely. And so, so know that there is a, a symbiotic kind of relationship in there, but you still get to set it, set the bar, you know, sort of don't, so don't let them set it. That's a, that's a real no, no. <laughs> The other thing is it might actually be that you can bundle things together. So you might have two or three products that actually make perfect sense for them to actually be together and that increases the value of what they actually might get. It might be something that you might have some, some time with you, but in addition, there might be an online course and there might be you a book. couple of guides yeah. or a book that actually just might make it land even better. It increases the value, but the thing to be careful with this one is, is please don't overload them. Don't throw the kitchen sink at it. <laughs> don't have a list this long of, oh, and you'll get this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing, because it just gets confusing. Bundling needs to make sense, but it can definitely increase the perceived value of what you get. And the thing is, if it's the products that we recommend that you always kind of have in your back pocket, then 
they're actually there already. So it doesn't cost you anything to actually yeah. throw those in and it adds value. So have a look at what's in my product range at the moment and what could I actually kind of bundle together. Just going to uh, butt yeah, in. So Lisa is saying, um, will it be okay to charge more because you want to attract only people who are serious and implement your advice? So yeah, definitely. The, mm. and, and, when, and I know you're in our membership site. So when you watch the, the monthly spotlight about our product journey, yeah. we would normally say, you know, being in, in the healthcare industry that you are, you might do a lot of the services that are talking about how to prevent back pain. Yeah. And they might be digital products and courses and things that you don't actually have any time after you've built them delivering them yeah and so when people actually come and work with you one-to-one -one as a therapist mm. they charge much you charge much more yeah. because you're actually working with them and they're really serious about doing the work and and it does stop those tire kickers that I know a lot of people in the chiropractor osteopathy they get people that just come in to mm. fix the problem but they're not willing to do the work to prevent it from happening again yeah so it's, it's about talking about creating this range of products that we'll talk about in a minute yeah. that allows you to only work with your ideal clients when you're actually swapping time for money yeah. but that doesn't mean that you don't work with people that aren't quite ready yet because you offer a range of products yeah. at different prices so uh let me continue a little bit and it, it, no 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 it make i mean it makes complete sense and that's not just true for those in the health industry right. that's true across the board again it, there's a lot to consider here so this might be a replay anyway and kind of stop pause think about and then kind of keep going the, the here comes a sort of a, a, a an infinity sing a symbol one position to price and price to position <laughs> so so position yourself to get the pricing as Kelly was just saying but also price to position mm. so you can actually price yourself at a certain level in order to position yourself because some people will have a perceived value of well I never go with the cheapest you know or I never go with the most expensive in that way so the you can use pricing as a way to do as a way to stand out in your own field I would highly recommend that you do a what you're known for seen as because actually if you know what you aspirationally want to be known for and seen as you can start to gauge your pricing you can start to play with your pricing but knowing what you can charge is really useful so back to the swat that Kelly was talking about earlier on as well. And, and it's also working with a client a couple of weeks ago who's making the transition from working with B2B, yeah. B2C, mm. into working with corporates. Yeah. And she was actually looking at the same pricing structure of working <laughs> with B2C as corporates. And I said, if you put that price in front of a corporate, they'd laugh because it's so cheap yeah. that they'd be like, you can't be any good at what you do yeah. if you're charging those prices. So again, it's knowing your industry. And knowing your avatar. And, and, and also, as you say, if you want to have those high quality clients because yeah. they are going to take the action, as you were just saying, mm. then you need to charge a little bit more than the average osteopathy or, you know, chiropractor or whatever it might be. Yeah, exactly. So, 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 so uh, back, back to the SWOT that we were talking about. Here's another little kind of sentence for you. There's something about going with the market rate and knowing the market rate. You're full of them today, aren't I you? am, I am, I know, I know, I know. It's, it's, it's just, they pop out, it's how they it's work. It's been a bad holiday, you've been on it, holiday, it, It's true, all it's true, I'm all fire, firing on all cylinders in that way. So, so, you know, you get to choose, we all get to choose our pricing, but we choose with logic and response, um, you know, to the competitor analysis, to everything else that's going on. I'll let you read Bethan's thing there. So the, so the thing that we're really saying here is, is you establish your value right at what we call the red carpet stage, which, you know, sort of we, we teach you at the retreat and inside the, um, the membership, because we really talk about your product range within that, because people need to understand just what's possible with you. And your job when you're marketing is to really help people understand what it is possible to create with you. So part of that is contextualizing the and highlighting your ROI for sure. So keep getting examples. Whenever anybody says, whenever any of your clients say anything to you around, I did this, it goes in your little book and you go, where could I use that to help somebody else understand that Bye. that's what I actually help people create? So, and you'll hear it in tiny sentences. So be on the listen out for it. 
Um, so whether that is they're saving money, they're spending money wisely, they're making money, it might be the pain relief that they've got, it might be the energy that they now have. They've now gone down Anything. to working three days a week because of the amount of money that they've increased so they don't have to work all the time. So the money gives them more freedom, yeah. but it's actually the freedom bit that they were yeah. really interested and in And it's doing. usually time, energy and money that you can look at from that perspective and what they do with those things. So, you know, are they going on, on more holidays because they never used to and that sort of thing. And again, all of that, hi, Karen, nice to see you. Um, all of that helps you to really contextualize what is possible. Because if I hear about somebody else's experience and I'm stuck in my experience, I go, I want some of that. That person might just be my person to go and help me do that. Um, so I'm always going to say this. If you haven't done the four intentions on your pricing, you need to do the four intentions on your pricing because you have to help people understand what they get. You have to help that. Um, and that's at an inner level, an emotional level, and on a tangible awesome. results level. Um, and the final thing is really this. Pricing is ultimately a, a how good a job you do marketing-wise and how confident you feel about what you're actually providing out there. So sometimes you might feel a little bit shaky as you put a price out there. It's not about you. It's about them mm. and their perceived need for it. So if you're addressing a problem and you know that you can and you feel confident that you can address a problem, trust me, you can charge the prices. So just push yourself. And one of the things I always say to people is, is keep increasing it 10%, whether that is on a time frame. So in three months time, I'll put my, my prices up by 10% or whether that is in five clients time, I'll put my prices up by 5% um, because that's just testing out what's actually possible. I promise you, every time I make people do this, the price that they were looking to charge is always superseded by what the market will pay. Always. Definitely. So let's get into some tactics. Now yes. we understand a little bit about the emotion and the why and the behind it all. Um, we've covered this in a Facebook Live. I think it was called, how do your customers experience you? Mm -hmm. uh, where we talk about the product range. And I know in, in our Changemaker Central membership, we've done a monthly spotlight on um, the range of products that you should put together. Yeah. So this helps, right? So I'll just give a very brief understanding of what, what our IP is I and what we cover. But the first stage, we, we, we associate it like going to a, a theatre. Mm. So the first stage is... We would. Because <laughs> we love the theatre. Because we love the theatre. <coughs> so the first stage is your red carpet. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going <coughs> to cough. When this is basically where all of the uh, paparazzi, we want all the eyes on this. Mm -hmm. So these are your free products, your opt-ins, your lead magnets, your digital products that you get out there just to really meet your avatar where they're at with the problems and the, uh, the aspirations that they have. Mm -hmm. So you talk their language, you get on their radar like we spoke about earlier. Yeah. Then once you've done that, they go onto the red carpet and they go into the bar area. Mm -hmm. Now these are products that are probably under a hundred pounds if you're spending more yeah. than £100 at the bar, you're probably quite drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you're falling but, around somewhere. So this is where people get to know each other. This is the stage where actually you're creating your community. People start sharing their experiences with you. Mm. They're testing you out. They're spending like £50 here and there yeah. to actually get some results, um, un you know, understand how you work and, and, and yeah. get some problems solved, but not the big problems. Yeah. This is the test. They might, they might not trust you with that yeah, yet. Is, They're just kind of dipping their toe in the water. Yeah, this is where they build the trust and relationships with you but with also all of your other customers so this yeah. is really what happens in the connection hub and the connect and create days that we do yeah then actually they've got the tickets to the show so the show is actually where you're going to be charging probably around 500 to 2000 pounds for your products depending on what it is because mm. this is actually where the meat of your ip is this is where your teach happens this is where the the real transformation happens this is yeah. they've got the tickets to see the show yeah. so you deliver the show this is where you go all out and teach yeah and then some people want more than that. Some people want to go to the after party. Damn. So after party pr prices are normally sort of two grand up and yeah. they can go really sky high. Yeah. But this is actually where they get to hang out with you as an individual. They get to know your inner circle, your little black book of contacts. Mm. They actually get some hand holding support, that real intense. Or they fast track fast through. Fast track support through that. Yeah. So, so it's really, you don't have to have all four stages. No. But for anyone on this live, I would definitely say you need some stuff at the red carpet to get the people stuff going viral people sharing the free products out people really getting there yeah 
the understanding of what you're offering and then work out if you're going to just do lots of bar offers lots of drinks <laughs> yeah or whether you're going to actually do deep dive teachers yeah. and have that in the forms of one-to-one -one coaching online courses membership sites all those types of deep dive uh, teach show mm -hmm. tickets and, and and that really depends on how you want to so have a look at Stephanie's question just because we need to address that one um, so so have a look at what your business model actually is you could have loads of products in the bar area you could actually have a huge amount of products in the after uh, party area depending on where you're actually wanting to put your attention so you get to build no cookie cutters right mm. you get to build what your product path actually is and that's what's really special you actually determine the pricing for each one of those products according to how it makes sense but if you think about it it's a seamless journey you were in the crowds you've stepped onto the red carpet you move yourself into the bar you decide that actually we or the person you have earned the right to actually teach them even more you do the show they watch the show and then they go to the after party but they might then go back into the bar and it Part of this yeah. is about like how does it make sense, right? So Stephanie, you asked the question, would it be good, what would be a good get to know me product for corporates, i.e. the bar, one day training for a lower fee? Mm. So corporates don't work in the same way for that user journey. That predominantly is a B2C user journey, red carpet, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, you can, I would highly do some get to know you products though. Totally. And for most corporates, that is some form of assessment. Yeah. So you go in and do some sort of audit, some sort of assessment on their SLT to actually highlight their training needs. Yeah. So therefore be able to put a proposal together of how you can solve them. But there needs to be some raised awareness level yeah. of actually, oh, this is what I can do for you. And that sometimes is at no charge or a very low charge. Yeah. Because people understand that actually if they close three and five of them, for a 50k training two month deal, then it's worth their time to invest and do a couple of hours assessment yeah. or audit on a, co on a corporation. And the chances are that you won't actually lose out by doing that. Even if you don't get that business, it gives you case study material yeah. to actually then go to the next one and share your examples, etc. So, so never look on that as a cost as such. So that, that was that, that was first, from a tactical point of view, that's our first point of it. And yeah. jo jo Joseph is liking, liking it. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, so it's just so that you've got a range of products. So if you are in that level where you want to charge for your time, yeah. you still are earning money and you still are reaching customers who are maybe not your ideal avatar yeah. that you want to work with, but you're still supporting them um, through digital or other resources. And it allows people, as Helena said, to earn, gain the trust and you earn the right to yeah. teach them. It becomes a real effortless flow to sell. So that's mm. the first thing. The next thing is actually, as we said here, along here, is to offer um, more than one price point. Hmm. So say, for example, when you're displaying this on your, your um, website that's or right. your sales pages, what you might want to do is use a technique called anchoring, mm -hmm. which is actually where you have three versions of a product. It could be like the bundling that Helena was talking about earlier, yeah. where you have this is the product, this is a, a higher price version of that, and this is the middle version. Mm -hmm. And actually what most people will do is they'll always opt for the middle version right. because that is the perceived most yeah. valuable Like I get a little product. bit of this, but not. I probably yeah. don't need that. And uh, Yeah, this. So it's from a technique point of view, anchoring is quite good if you've got the range of products that you can repurpose stuff and put them in three different packages, yeah. then if you want most of your sales to come from, from, from that product, go for the middle one and anchor and do it that way. We're just helping Bethan with a meeting that she's got oh, on okay. Thursday, Thursday, that's all. <laughs> um, another technical thing that a lot of research has been done on is actually if your product ends in the number nine, mm. um, then more people will gravitate, gravitate to buying a product. So 9.99 or 19.99 or yeah. nine, you know, whatever it might that's be, right. if it ends in a Nine, the research shows that yeah. that is actually and um, from a tactical point of view there is mm -hmm. scientific research that that works yeah but these are all tactical things right yes. the thing that I really want to summarize mm. with really is make sure when you're pricing a product yeah. that you know how much it costs you Please. to deliver it first of all okay so if it's an event how much is you know we've done a Facebook live on how to create a run a good event run it yeah successful, successful event 
And then there we've got the whole download of all the things you should be looking at, AV and hire and all the things to actually work out what the cost is. Because at the very minimum, yeah. you need to cover your cost for this product. Truly, okay? you do not want to be running at a loss or even if it's a product that leads to something else, you want to be factoring the two in together so that there is no loss. Yeah. So know your costs before you start pricing that product. Entirely. So then we've got that number solid. Then have the work on the positioning, as I said to you before. Mm -hmm. <coughs> work out what you over deliver in the industry. Yeah. What are you offering that isn't an industry standard to everybody else from that SWOT analysis that we did? And also know what that perception is from a price point of view and how your price could increase. Mm. But the, oh, who have I met? Uh, Josefa, I'm just reading. Okay. Yeah. But the, the third point, I think this is what a lot of people forget to do, is that when you know those numbers and those figures, mm -hmm. Ask yourself, what's going to make, what number will excite you? Yeah. Right? What number, if I knew I was going to sell that product or service at that, will actually make me want to jump out That's of bed right. in the morning? Will actually go, look, I'm here, I'm going to show up full on, give 100%, because that is actually what I feel really excited about charging. Because we can make all the tactics in the world and know all this stuff, but if, the, if you look at that figure and you go, I don't want to do it for that. And, and you're not and, going to market it. Yeah. You're not going to be. No, there. I was just going to say. And so, so, so actually, so I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, sort of extend that just a little bit more and actually say, what's going to, what's going to make you excited to actually promote it? Jump out of bed to actually go. I am so excited about sharing this with the world. I so want to get this out there. And in fact, actually, I, I just did this with a client uh, recently, and she was going to charge a, a certain amount, and uh, I made a put it up by about a thousand pounds and um and and that really shifted the energy with which she was speaking about difference. all of the marketing and everything else and i was just like now it works yeah. now you can go and talk about it with passion because here's the thing we all want to be served by people who are excited about their own products yeah. and, and if you are that then maybe it's the fact that you need less when you go back to your budgeting and your targets. Yeah. If you're adding an extra grand on them, say that it was a thousand pounds and it is, then you don't need to serve as that many was actually, people. That was exactly what we, what we then ended up yeah. doing because this person is an introvert and actually it meant, that it meant that you know, we only needed to do 10 people not the 25 people that was originally in there, which was the, the thought of, oh my God, 25 people. Yeah. I was like, well, how would 10 be? Great. So let's actually make it work. So you can play with your figures. So it's what we, we do know, at the retreat in a yeah, big way. I love the mixing desk. So, and this is what we need to work towards. So some of you might be saying, okay, I need to increase my positioning in order to increase my price. And well, that's what all these lives are about, right? Yeah. How you can actually improve your expertise and, and yeah. market yourself differently and, and, and put yourself out there. Yeah. So do the work. Have a look at, first of all, make sure you know your costs, yeah. right? That's, that's the bottom line of any pricing. Truly. Because we want to make sure that you're not making a loss. Then work on your positioning, really get to grips because this is going to give you the confidence to charge. Right? Yeah. We're not doing a lot of inner work on this live. No. Uh, we've got lots of confidence-based <laughs> Facebook lives in our, in our recordings. But this is more about thinking, yeah, I have earned the right. That's right. right? For, to be able to charge that, you know, I, I can say, oh, I spent 60 grand with a mentor and therefore you're going to get the insights from that yeah. and not have to spend the money that I did. So therefore, think about the things that you've invested in your life that have earned you the right to be able to charge the price that you've done. Mm -hmm. But as always, go and look at the results yeah. so that you can say, this is what you're going to have from a tangible, from working with me, with an ROI yeah. to justify yeah. that this is not only feels right from an emotional it, thing. It wasn't a, oh, no. I'll make it this much. It's got a reason for it. So we've got two questions okay. just to answer there. That's it. Uh, you can you can buck the trend and yeah. start um, charging a zero at the end and a nine. Yeah. I, we're not we're not saying that only the nine yeah. works. Um, you always stand out, Han. So go it, do something yeah, exactly. Go go do something different. And some of that may well actually kind of depend again on the avatar. You know, if the avatar is really fed up with this whole oh god, it's a pound less and it's just making me, then then go for the zero. You know. So but but again, I would always go back to the avatar and go, what do they do? Because most of us love a bargain. And and my thing is depending depending on what level you're working on. If you're working on mass mm -hmm. sales, yeah. then if you're charging a zero or a nine, the amount of difference for that extra nine P or nine pounds on your actual budget and your, yeah. your P and L is massive. Yeah. So actually there is a big difference and I would definitely go for the, yeah. the most people will see no difference to nine pounds or nine P then they would do to do they, it they, 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 they rationalize inside them, oh, you know, 69 is actually 70, 
but it still looks like yeah, 60. Yeah. And so, it, well, it, it looks like 60. Yeah. And, and that's the piece, right? So so just be careful what they might be saying on the inside of themselves. And then France Lisa has got... What tips do you, will you have for a high-end product for individuals who work in a corporate for the corporate to help pay for the product, if that makes sense. So, so, so the corporate, could you get the corporate to pay for the service for the individual? So what do you do around pricing that? That's what I'm hearing from that question. Okay, so if it's like healthcare, for example, say for example, because I know the field that you're in, maybe you're offering mm. a corporation for, you know, their SLT, their senior leadership team to have regular, um, you know, therapy Treatments. with you so that prevent stuff from happening. Yeah. Then again, I would be going in, okay, so, um, what do you know the cost of how much, how many of your um, mm. employees suffer from back pain? Do you know how many days of sick that works? Do you know about the ergonomics of their desk and how that's affecting it? So always go into yeah. how much is that costing that corporation? Yeah. And if you came in and offered them a package for their senior leadership team, for example, the one that they earn the most money from, yeah. to actually make sure that they don't suffer from that back pain, then that's how you would price that, because yeah. you'd be looking at how many days of six costing their yeah. corporation. I think everything, everything can be rationalized. And, and so some of you may well need to do the work. And so that's where I'm gonna kind of wrap us up and actually say, here's your homework. And again, we'd love to know what you actually do. Tag us, ask the questions, do what you need to do. But the first thing that you absolutely need to do is go make a little menu of these are my products what are the tangible benefits what is the roi on each one of these products or services and get clear on what are the costs of delivering those and don't forget to factor your own costs in mm. so the cost of you delivering because nine times your out of time. ten people don't <laughs> factor that in they go oh it'll cost this much this much and this much in terms of materials or venues and everything else it's like yeah but you yeah. like how What's much do you cost rate? so and if you haven't got a day rate go work that out before you do anything <laughs> um so because actually that's going to help you with your pricing and that's going to help you with the scenario we just talked about around are you excited about pricing it at this particular price point right does it work for you and that's part of that factor so Get clear and tangible on what's the ROI on each of the products that you actually have. And then look at where in my product range am I missing something? Do, does it make sense? Is there a flow? Is there a massive gap between some of the products that I have? Does that work for me? Does that work for my clients? So again, just look at it from those perspectives. And then finally, the big piece here is, is Go and take a look at your positioning. Are you positioning yourself well? What is your positioning in the industry? How could you increase that positioning so that you can actually play with pricing? And the other thing that we absolutely would recommend, just because he's brilliant, um, in uh, he's one of our change makers, uh, but he's also in the Connection Hub, Tony Winyard, uh, the Value Catalyst. He has a brilliant podcast, but also has a brilliant uh, Facebook group, where if you are struggling on that inner level of charging your worth, we would highly recommend that you go and just, yeah, there you go, um, and connect with Tony, because... He really does help you elevate where you're at in terms of your pricing. So the chances are many of you have much to go and do. Yeah, they're all saying that they love us and they've got a lot of stuff to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's just where we want them. And seriously, if at any point we can help you with that or you want to do some more of the deeper dives, just, just you know, tag us. And let's see what the solution yeah. is. You know, come play inside the membership. Come to the retreat if you just want a couple of days to just really fully focus on your business. Uh, but most of all, go do the homework. Yeah, and we'll see a lot of you tomorrow at the Connect and Create Day. Oh, yes, that's right. I've nearly <laughs> forgotten. Oh, that's really good. Right, I'm getting up in order to say goodbye. Have a see good you one. soon. <laughs>